Hey, this is Aflevavi from LinkedInRef.com and it's time for another viewer request and this time you're in for a real treat because we're going to learn Jerry Reed's guitar version of Ray Charles, Hallelujah, I Love Her So. So we're going to learn the work of two geniuses, Ray Charles, a rhythm and blues genius, and Jerry Reed, a fingerstyle guitar genius. So this is going to be real fun. We're going to learn the entire accompaniment and the solo. The solo part, this has a terrific solo. First I'm going to play it for you so you can see and hear how it goes and then we're going to break it down lick by lick with tabs on the screen as usual. We're going to have a lot of fun with this, but first it goes like this. Okay, so we're going to learn the verse first, and then we're going to learn the intro. Okay, trust me on this. The verse is the easiest part. The intro is more complex than the verse. And then we're going to learn the solo, which is a bit more complex than both of them. So let's learn the verse first. The verse goes like this. This little line goes like this. You play F and you play the bass and then you play strings 2, 3 and 4 twice. Okay? And then you play this. Okay, now what is this? This is F7 over A. Okay, why is this F7? Because this is actually this. Okay? This is the D7 shape up three frets, okay? Okay, with A on the bass. And since you're picking strings two, three, and four, there's no reason for the pinky on the E string, so you play it like this. You put the first finger on the third fret of the D string, you put your third finger on the fifth fret of the G string, and your second finger on the fourth fret of the B string. So from second string to third to fourth, it's four, five, three. Okay, and the A string. So you play the same thing you played before. You play the bass note, the A this time, and you play strings two, three, and four twice. Okay, so it's this F. F7 over A. Okay, and then you do the same thing with B flat 7. Okay, you play the B flat bass, and then you play strings 2, 3, and 4. Okay, on 3, 1, 3, of course. I say of course because if you're learning a Jerry Reed piece, then I guess you already know what a B flat 7 is. 
right? So, okay, that's what you played so far. F, F7 over A, B flat 7. Then it's this line. Okay, and it begins again. It's, it's actually just this. Okay? Now you can play it like this as well. Uh -oh. Okay? Which is kind of a mixolydian lick. Um, but the original is this. Okay? You bar the first fret and you play strings 4 and 5. And you hammer on another bar on the third fret so it sounds like this. Okay? Okay, it's a double bar. And then the same thing on strings 3 and 4 instead of strings 4 and 5. Okay, you, you play this on strings 4 and 5. Now you play this, the first fret again, barred, on strings 3 and 4. And then you bar again on the third fret and you pick it. So it's... Okay, just a simple pentatonic lick on F minor pentatonic. So, okay, one hammer on to three on the fourth and fifth strings, then one and three on the third and fourth strings. Okay, and then you bar the entire uh, first fret, getting ready for F again, and you play strings three and four and you hammer on the F chord. Okay, you play this and you hammer on the chord. Okay, so and then you play the bass again and start again. Okay, now instead of this one and three on the third and fourth strings. Instead of that, you can play one and three on the second and third strings, and that way you get a mixolydian lick. Okay? Okay, that's one variation you can play because it comes around so many times, you can vary it. You can play this like three times, and then on the fourth time, play this. Okay, for variation. So you play this whole thing twice. And then, instead of hammering on the F chord, you just play an F chord, okay? After the second time, you play and then F, okay? Strengths 2, 3, 4, and 6, okay? Now, you play this and count 2, 3, and then play this. Okay, F and then F7 uh, over A. So it's two, three. Got it? Two, three. Okay. And then you count again. Two, three. Two, three. Okay. And you play this. Um, this is A6 to A7. Actually, it's A13 to A7, but let's not get into that. Let's get into that. It's a simple explanation. It's A13 and not A6 because you have the seventh note in there as well. So you call it 13, okay? If it was A6, it was A major and you add the six. If it has the seventh note in it, you call it 13, okay? That's the logic. So it's A13 to A7, okay? How do you do it? You play the open A string along with the second, third, and fourth strings, and the second, you play, you put the pinky. This is, uh, explaining a Jerry Reed piece is confusing, so be easy on me, okay? Um, you put your pinky on the seventh fret of the B string, you put your second finger on six on the G string, and your first finger on five on the D string, so you have um, seven, six, five. Okay? And along with the A bass, 
this is a 13. Okay? And you slide the pinky from 7 to 8. So it turns into an A7. Okay, you actually slide into A7. And then B flat 7 again. But this time you put it on the sixth uh, on the sixth fret. Okay, and play strings two, three, four, and six. Okay, this was the A7 shaped B flat seven, and this is the E7 shaped B flat seven. Okay, for voicing purposes. Okay, this is the purpose. Okay, so you play this, and then this strings two, three, four, and six. Okay, it's it's strings two, three, and four throughout. So, one, two, three, two, three, two, three, four, and then this. This is a diminished run. This is uh, half diminished to half diminished to diminished. Okay, half diminished is also called uh, minor seven flat five. So you play B minor seven flat five, which is, from the second string down, okay? It's three, two, three, two. Three, two, three, two. Three, two, three, two. Okay? And you play strings two, three, four, and five. And you take that and slide it to five, okay? D minor seven flat five or D half diminished. Okay? Which is on six, five, six, and five. Okay? The bass on five. Okay. And then you take that to 8, okay? But you turn this from a half diminished chord into a full diminished chord by exchanging the first and second fingers, okay? This is on 9, 8, 9, and 8, and these two are on 8. So you take the second finger, replace the first finger on the bass, and put the first finger on 7 on the G string, okay? Okay, so now it's a full diminished chord. Now it's nine, seven, nine, eight, okay? With the bass on eight. So, okay, B half diminished, D half diminished, and then F diminished. So that's the end of the break. It was two, three, two, three, two, three, four. Got it? Again, without me counting. Okay. So, from the top, before we play the last line of the verse. flat seven diminished run now this is a diminished run because um, the bass notes actually all the notes here form a diminished chords in between themselves because B D and F are a diminished chord um, it's okay so that's very smart. And then you play the F again. And then you play A7, okay, with a high 7. Uh, you play th uh, 3 on the E string, okay, this is A7, just add 3 on the E string, okay, it's the octave of the 7th note, the G note. So. And you play that, okay? But this time you play strings one, two, three, and five. Okay? And then you play D minor. Okay, just a simple D minor chord, and you play strings one, two, three, and four. And then you play D minor over C. 
okay, with three on the bass note. Now you can play D minor with your pinky on three on the B string, and then you will have an easier time putting this on the C bass. Okay. And D minor over C is an inversion of D minor seven. Okay, so you're actually playing D minor seven over C. Um, and then this, which is B flat seven again, and you don't have to put uh, the finger on the D string because you're not playing it this time. You're playing strings one, two, three, and five. Okay, so you have. Okay, you have a bass dissension, and you play the the first, second, and third strings throughout. Okay, so it's a pretty perfect voice leading. D minor to D minor seven, an inversion of D minor seven, D minor over C, and then B flat seven. Okay, so you play this. F, A7 with the high 7, then D minor, D minor over C, E flat 7. Okay, and now we've come to this. Okay, this is a piano line, basically. It has an ascending bass note and a descending melody so you play okay zero one and two on the e bass and then you play three on the bass and four on the e string okay and then you play three on the e string with the open a string then you bar the first fret and you play the e string and the a string okay Kind of a B flat outline. Then you keep the bar on, you put your pinky on three on the B string, and your second finger on two on the A string. This is kind of a B half diminished outline. Okay, keep the bar on, and then put your third finger on three on the G string, okay? You keep everything on and you push your second finger to three on the A string so you get this, okay? You get one on the E string, that's the bar, and uh, three and three on the second and third strings, okay? And three on the A bass, making this B flat over C, or an inversion of um, of B uh, of B flat nine. Okay, so it's basically you can call it B flat over C, B flat nine over C, or B flat at nine. Okay, I prefer the simplest name, B flat over C, and you play it twice. And then you play F, and you play strings one, two, three, and six. Okay, so again, zero, one, two on the bass, three on the bass, four on the E string. Open A string with three on the E string. Bar on the first fret, you play the E and A strings. Two on the A string with three on the B string. Then this, okay? B flat, but instead of putting on the B flat, you take your second finger and put it on the third fret of the A string. And you play strings one, two, three, and five. And F. So you get. Um, on the bass notes. Okay? And you get this. On the melody. Pretty genius. Um, perfection. Okay, so. Okay, it's a perfect ending line. So, slowly.
slide to C7 on 8. Or you play C. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Um, you pick strings 1, 2, 3, and 6. So it's C anyway, unless you add the pinky on 11 on the B string. And then you have a 7th chord. So... Um, You can slide the bass and then pick the chord or play the chord twice. Okay, so we're finished with the verse. I told you that this was relatively easy. So um, com in comparison to the intro and the solo, we're going to learn the intro next. Um, so let's play this first. F. The intro goes like this. Okay, or okay, as it does in the recording. Now you play um, 0, 1, 2, 3 on the A bass. And then you play F. Okay, just a beginner F, a small F. Okay, and then uh, just the entire chord 1, 2, 3, and 4. Strings 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then you play on the B string 3, 1. Then 2 on. Then 2 on the G string. And that you, you keep the chord on and you put the pinky on and take it off okay on the B string and then the G string on two and then on the D string you play three and zero okay and that's where you leave the chord then you put this okay the B flat uh, seven without and without the finger on the D string because you don't need it you play strings one two and three along with the B flat bass on the A string and then you just um, you just pull your pinky to bar the, the third fret for a second you play three on the E string and then play the B flat seven again okay so it's okay it's a lot more comfortable than putting the entire chord on. Okay, because you don't need this. You, you play this. Okay? So it's F. Okay? And then you play it again. Okay, I'm, I'm playing a solo this time just to emphasize the notes but it's so fast that you don't need to take it off. Okay? And then you play this again. Okay, zero, one, two, three on the bass. And then you play one and one on the first and second strings. Okay, just bar it. And then the D bass. And then zero and one on the first and second strings. Okay, so you get. Okay, and mute the D string when you play this. Okay, 
play the D string and then mute it right away. Okay? So it sounds like, uh, uh, like a staccato solo. Okay? Okay, you can play, <clears throat> excuse me, you can play the F, uh, you can play the F chord again at first if you want to variate. Okay, it, it sounds great. Okay, the F chord and then D, mute it, zero and one on the first and second string. So, okay, and then you play two on the bass. Okay, F sharp, and then you play this line. Okay, so it's a good thing we learned it already. Um, so let's not repeat that because we already played it. So F sharp bass, and then the uh, the piano dissension ascension line, counterpoint line. Okay, and then you play this. Okay, which is put the D shape, the D chord shape on five, so it's five, six, five. Okay, and you play the G string, and then strings one, two, and three, and when you play the G string again, put your pinky on seven, so. Okay, so it changes from five to seven. It's five the first time. And then it's seven, okay? Five, five, six, seven. And then bar, keep the third finger on the sixth fret of the B string and bar the fourth, uh, the fourth fret on the first, second, and third strings and play strings two and three, then the first string, then the second string. So it's And then take the bar to the third fret and play strings one and three. And then one on the first string, two on the third string. Okay, this is F again. This is an F outline. Okay, this is an F major third. Okay, because this is F and that's its major note. So. Got it, D shape on five, seven, then uh, four as a bar and six on the B string, three first and, for, uh, and third strings, and then one on the E string, two on the th uh, third string. Okay? And then you play B seven, Okay, but you don't uh, hear the seven, so you play, you're actually playing B, okay? So you play strings one, two, three, and six, okay? The bar on seven, and then you push it one fret forward to C seven, and this time you put your pinky on 11 on the B string, and you play strings two, three, and six, okay? So you get this is a dissension, and this is an ascension, so you get a voice leading. Instead of all the notes going in the same direction. So, got it? So, the intro. confused with 
this at the end there, so it's um Okay. Now we're gonna learn the solo. Okay? Now get ready because this is a superb solo. Um it's very very smart. So it, it it's a piano solo, okay? Jerry Reed composed a piano solo on the guitar. That's how smart it is. So, you begin with a fingerstyle solo, okay? He begins easy, and then he takes you into the craziness. So, it begins like this. Okay? It's this. One hammer on to three on the B string. And then one on the E string. And then one on the E bass. Okay? He plays it with the thumb. So feel free to play it with the thumb. Okay? And he, he slaps it. And then three on the E string and then four on the E string with the open A bass. Okay? And then three on the um, on the B string. So it's got it? Um, got it? So it's you'll understand the logic of this line when we complete it. It's a it's kind of a bass movement. And then it's it's this. You put your finger on the B flat bass, one on the A string, and you play this along with the open E string. And then you pull off one to zero on the E string. And then you play a B bass, two on the A string, with um, one on the E string. Okay, so you get bass dissension and the solo built upon it so got it and then you play this which is three pull off to one on the E string then three one on the B string and then one and one on the E string and the E bass with the thumb and you do the A line again, three and four on the E string, the A bass along with four, and then three on the B string, and then the same thing with B flat and B. Okay, open E string, one pull off to zero on the E string, with the B flat bass at the beginning, and then the B bass with one on the E string. Okay, so it was basically playing the same thing twice. Let's repeat that. Okay, and then it's this. Okay. It's it's a simple pentatonic click. It's Set, uh, not seven, it's five to seven on the G string, five to seven, and then six on the B string. Okay, now you play ten on the B string with your pinky, and then you play six on the E string with your first finger, and then ten on the B string again, and then seven on the E string and then 10 on the B string again, and then eight on the E string. So you get this on the E string and this between them, okay? So it's 10, six, 10, seven, 10, eight. Okay, now it's supposed to be in staccato. You don't play them together. You don't do, okay? It's supposed to be. So you take the finger off when the, when the second finger is on, okay? You alternate between them. 
and then it's um, it's this. It's kind of a bluesy uh, transition into an F, an F outline because this is F. So it's um, uh, ten to nine on the B string. You hammer it on. Okay, you can slide it. Sounds almost the same, it's one fret. And then 10 on the G string. So you get this. And together. Got it? And then it's this. Okay, now the chromatic motif, there was a chromatic motif here, and then it's here, and now it's here. Okay, that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying that this is a piano solo. There's a motif going around harmonizing the solo. So, um, it's an ingenious. So, you bar the eighth fret on the first and second strings. Okay, you leave that bar on. And you play this, okay? You hammer on 10 on the E string. You play strings one and two on eight. And you hammer on the second finger, remember the second finger on the E string on 10. And you leave that on and you play 13 and 10. Okay, with your pinky and second finger which is still on and the bar is still on, okay? Okay, because we want this note to keep ringing. It's still ringing in the background. It's a piano solo, remember? And then you put 13 with your pinky on again. And with your first finger, you can let go of the second here. And you take your first finger and you play. You play 13 on the E string with nine on the B string and then with 10. Got it? So this is the chromatic motif here. It's 8, 9, 10. Get how smart it is? Okay, from the top. speed and then it's this okay now this is a7 to b flat 7 now you can play it like this okay but Jerry Reed plays it like this my guess is he does it to confuse whoever is trying to look at what he does and transcribe it that's the only reason to change fingerings here. Because you don't really need to do this. You can do this. It's your choice. So you can play, you should play strings three, four, and six, okay, on the A7 chord, okay? Which is the same as the jazz A7 shape, okay? It's the same notes. And then move it one fret up to B flat seven and play strings two, three, four, and six. So you get strings three, four, and six, and then strings two, three, four, and six. So they sound uh, they sound different, even though they're the same shape moving around. You add a high note, and then it sounds different. So. That's the, that's the psychological trick here. They sound like two completely different chords, even though it's just the same chord moving around. But if you eliminate this note, it sounds like a harmonization. It sounds like a voice leading, even though 
it's a block moving around. Hope you get what I'm trying to say. So, and then it's this. Okay? It's a simple minor lick. It's 8 on the E string, then 10, on, uh, not 10, 11 on the B string, and then 9 pull off to 8. Okay, and then 10 on the G string. So it's 8, 11, 10 pull off to 8, 10. And then it's this. Okay? Which is a hardcore blues line. Okay? It's kind of an old school blues line. Which is barring the seventh fret playing strings three and one. And then your pinky on 10 on the G string. So it's... Okay? What? You wanna go? Wanna go? Go. No, just wants to change position. Okay, so... Seven and seven on the third and first strings. And then 10 on the third string. And then this. You're playing uh, 6 on the E string and 8 on the B string. And then you take it back 2 frets to 4 and 6. Now, this is just descending third. But there's a psychological trick here because it's this. Okay, it's this. You hear this. Okay, it's another transition into the F outline. But this harmonizes it. And you don't hear, you hear this harmonized okay that's that's what I mean by this is a very very smart composition and then you play this no nope, let's play this again okay so now you can hear the logic behind the line, how it all fits and comes together nicely. Now, you play this again. Okay, five to seven on the G string and six on the B string. Okay, this hammer-on. And then you slide from uh, eight to 10 on the B string and you play eight on the E string. Okay. Simple, um, simple pentatonic lick again. And then he plays um, a very tiny short A string, okay? And then he mutes it right away, just like you did with, okay? When you muted the D note, remember? Okay? It's the same thing. Just a very short A note. Okay? And then... Okay? And then this. Which is... Okay? Do me a favor, let's not get into chord names here. Okay? This is a harmonized solo, so let's treat it this way. It's 10 on the E string, 8 on the B string, 9 on the D string, uh, the G string, sorry. Okay, so it's 10, 8, 9. Okay? And then you bar the 8th fret and you add 
uh, you add 10 on the 10 on the B string okay so it's it's this okay so it's this okay so together it's okay okay and then it's okay it's kind of a country lick because of the high uh, D note harmonizing this so put your pinky and third fingers on 10 on the first and second strings pull off 10 to 8 on the second string okay 10 on the E string is still ringing okay and then keep it ringing and play 10 and 7 on the G string okay and this is still ringing very faintly got it it's again it's a pentatonic click but with a twist and then it's this bar the eighth fret and play strings one two and three and then this which is the same shape you played here on 10 which was 10 8 and 9 now it's 8 6 and 7 okay it's the same shape so got it so the entire line was Again, okay, and, and then you go back to the verse, okay. So, um, let's play the solo again, okay. I'm gonna read out what we're playing and then I'm gonna play it straight. So, F, A, B flat, B, again, pentatonic leg. 10 pedal note. Um, the, the stretchy lick. And then A7 to B flat 7. And then the smart hardcore blues line. <clears throat> and then harmonized country lick. Harmonized again. Piano genius. And then right back to the verse, or you can finish if you want on F. Okay, so the solo. Never mind, it's just a demonstration. You have to go and practice this. But first, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've got a ton of lessons here already and I keep uploading them and making them uh, whenever I can. I try my best. You can go download the tab if you want from the website. It's free. The link is in the description. You can go download it from the website. And if you want to give something back for this lesson and from for the tab and for what I'm doing here on Lickenriff. There's a donation button right there on the website and I'd be grateful for any donation whatsoever. It all goes back into Lickenriff, into making the arrangements, into practicing them, making time to make these lessons and shoot them and edit them and upload them. It all takes work and time and I'm happy to do it, but if you can donate and help me produce more lessons, then uh, I'd be very grateful for any donation whatsoever. Now, you go practice this, go get it under your fingers. And remember, be patient, uh, hard work 
really pays off. It takes time sometimes for the muscle memory to work and get it under the fingers, but it does eventually. If I can play it, you can play it. Trust me on this. I was a very, very, very lazy guitar student. Um, so if I can do it, you can do it. Go play it and I'll see you the next lesson. And if you want to share this lesson, feel free because everybody's entitled to learn guitar. The lessons are for free and they're for everyone. So if you can help spread the word about Lick and Riff and this, this lesson and these lessons, then thank you. Go practice and I'll see you the next lesson. Thanks for watching.